Hi, Easy Contents here. This is a powered USB hub with a small bridge board for the DE10 Nano that is running the Mista project. Mister is an open project that aims to recreate various classic computers, retro game consoles and arcade machines using modern hardware. This USB hub connects to the DE10 Nano using this small USB bridge board so you don't need to use loose cables. I have dedicated this video to show you how I soldered these boards. They are assembled with surface mount and through hole components. The boards themselves are double layer PCBs and are designed by Alexei Melnikov. The Gerber files used by PCB manufacturers can be downloaded for free from the Mr. Project wiki pages. I will provide links in the description below. Before starting the soldering process, it is useful to gather all the components needed later. This way you don't need to get distracted while soldering your board. SMD components are stored on rails, but when you buy in small numbers, you will end up with strips, sometimes bound together, just like these resistors. Then you can just cut off the number you will need. After you are finished with sorting out all of the components, you should end up with a pile like this. In the past, I would have never attempted to solder SMD as I thought that it was very hard. But I found out that with a couple of tips and some practice, it is actually easy to do. There are a lot of tutorials out there on SMD soldering and I have created some of my methods which I will share with you here. The heart of the USB hub is this FE 2.1 chip. It is housed in a low profile quad flat package with 48 pins and is able to connect 7 USB ports. To align the chip on the PCB, I am using Captain tape because of its heat resistant properties. But in the past I have also used transparent plastic tape. Make sure you have a thin strip of the tape Attach to the chip and align it exactly to the traces on the PCB. I am using a chip microscope to help me in the process, but it is also possible to do this with wearable magnifying glasses. I also attach the board with sticky ticks. Two pieces glued under the PCB will do fine. It's just to make it more firm while soldering. To solder SMD, I am using 0.5mm soldered in with lead from Steno and gel flux. My soldering iron is equipped with a needle tip, which in my opinion is the best for SMD soldering. The temperature of my soldering iron is set to 375 degrees Celsius. Now we can proceed with adding flux to tap solder the corners of the chip. I like to use flux in gel form. Tap solder the first corner of the chip so it won't move when we are soldering the remaining pins. Let's turn the board around and add some flux to the second corner so we can tap it with solder. Then we can apply the rest of the flux to all the remaining pins. And drag solder using just a small bit of solder. Note how we can distribute all the solder around the pins. Unfortunately, sometimes a small block of solder remains behind and has to be removed using the soldering wick. After that, we turn the board back around and redo the same process. Cleaning the tip of your iron is also important. It helps in removing remains of the solder. 
we can finish up soldering of the two remaining sides of the chip. Sometimes dragging the solder around long enough will also work in removing all the solder blobs. As you can see, I dragged the solder from top to bottom of the pins, keeping the soldering tip in horizontal position. Another thing that I like to do after I finish soldering a chip is to use my multimeter for shorts. It is not always clear to see if the solder has made a short between pins. And this way you can eliminate the risk of damaging the chip or the whole circuit after switching it on. We can now continue soldering the other components. These are the pads for the 12 MHz crystal. I am adding some gel flux on top of them. This way I can melt the solder on the soldering ion tip without worrying that the flux in the solder core will melt away. Then I place the crystal with the pointed tweezers and tap the first corner of the crystal. We can do the same on the other side. Just as before, we will put some flux on the pads and solder all the pins on the next chip, which is the NCP380 current limiting switch. It can protect your board when the output load exceeds the current limit threshold or a short is present. Soldering of this component is optional, but if you choose to do so, it will be required to solder some extra resistors and jumpers. I will also show you the configuration of the board when the chip is not present. Soldering the chip is a bit tedious, but in my opinion it is worth adding it. The next component on our list is this micro USB connector. Again we will add some flux and we will do that also on the small pads on the sides as they will hold the connector in place. Then we use the Kapton tape to secure it in place and solder the connections. The first two pins are actually tied together, so no worries there. It is an upstream port and actually only used when connecting the USB directly to a computer. We will couple our board with the mister using a USB bridge. After removing the Kapton tape, we will add some extra flux to the flaps and put a lot of solder on the flaps of the connector. Trust me, it's needed or it will break off when you try to connect a cable to it. The board has a total of 13 ceramic capacitors that need to be soldered. After putting the flux on the pads, I put a bit of solder on the tip of the soldering iron. And while holding the capacitor in place, solder one of the sides. Then I hold the solder wire to join the other edge. I will not demonstrate how I solder the other capacitors, as you probably got the idea on how to do it. We can now start to solder the last set of SMD components, which are the resistors. I will skip the video sequence applying the flux. Notice that I am soldering R1 in the R1A slot to force the boards to use external power. Otherwise the power for the host would be drawn from the USB port of the mister. As I mentioned earlier, the current limiting switch will require some extra components to be soldered. It includes R12, which has a value of 5.6 kilo ohms. This resistor connects through ground to pin number 5 of the current limiting switch and sets the limit of current that can flow. This value of the resistor gives almost its full output of around 2.1 ampere. R13 and R14 have a value of 10k and function as pull up and pull down resistors to enable the working of the chip. Jumper JP2 can be used with a 0 ohm resistor or can be bridged using a solder blob. 
the schematics of the USB hub 2.1 show exactly what resistor and jumpers need to be soldered when using the current limiting switch. We can observe that when we don't provide the NCP380 chip, we need to solder jumper JP1 and don't solder R12, R13, R14 and jumper JP2. R13 can also be set to 0 ohms. This is how the configuration looks on a board that is soldered without the current limiting switch. We can continue to solder the LEDs. As all the other components, we can get them out in a simple way using tweezers. The polarity of the SMD LEDs is marked in different ways. In my case, the green LEDs had an arrow and we all know that the negative edge, the cathode, is at the pointy end. The red LED, however, had some other kind of marking. But the idea is the same. Negative side is where the horizontal line points to. Turning the LED around, there is always a green line on one of the edges, signifying the cathode. On the board where the LED needs to be soldered, there is a squared bracket, and the flat side indicates the negative edge with the green line. Soldering is done in the same way as all the other SMD parts. I will not show it in this video, but the current limiting resistors R4 through R11 need to be soldered as well. We are now done with SMD soldering. It wasn't that bad, was it? We can continue with the through hole components. First on the list is the 5 volt barrel power connector. Before soldering it, cut off a part of the pins that is sticking out. This way the solder joints will look a little bit nicer. The pins are a bit hard to cut, so use good side cutting pliers. Adding the sticky tacks will help while soldering. To solder the through hole components, I am switching to a slightly thicker 0.7 mm solder wire. We are ready to solder the connector. The ground pin needs a lot of heat to be applied, so the solder can cover the joint and fill the hole. The other two pins are a bit easier to solder. The board has a total of 7 USB connectors. Before soldering them, plug them inside the PCB. Then solder the pins. The last pin is connected to the ground plane, so it needs a bit more heat applied to it. After we finish, we cut off the side pins of the connectors and solder them while applying a lot of solder and holding the soldering tip for a while longer so it will form a nice and rounded solder joint. The flux inside the solder wire spatters around, so be careful. We can finally solder the last part on our USB hub board, and that is the 5 pin header connector. We will also add the sticky tags to hold it in place while soldering. Soldering on camera is actually pretty hard, as you have to try to fiddle around the lens and solder under unnatural angles. Here I have just created a solder bridge. But let's continue and finish soldering of the remaining pins and worry about that later. Let's fix that solder bridge now. And finally, let's get rid of that plastic part as it will raise the USB bridge board a bit too high and the mister board will not fit on top of it. Three parts are needed to solder the USB bridge. The PCB, L-shaped micro USB connector 
and 5 pin FEMA header connector. I'll use the sticky tags again to hold the connector in place. There are two chassis pins and five pins that connect directly to the designated USB pins. To sum them up, they are VBus, Data Minus, Data Plus, ID and Ground. The last two are tied together here. We do the same with the five pins of the female header. Hold it with the sticky tags and solder the five pins. The VBus pin is actually not coupled to the 5 pin header as we tap the power directly from the external power supply. Cut off the end of the pins that stick out as they could cause to short the PCB of the Mr. D10 nano board. Now we can finally test our soldered board and connect it directly to a USB port on a computer. Next we connect up a couple of USB devices. The LEDs lit up nicely, which means it is fully operational. This is my Mr. setup. The final test is to connect the USB hub using the USB bridge connector. The hub slides under the Mr. board and connects to the micro USB connector seamlessly. Connecting the power supply with the split cable and connecting USB devices also shows correct operation. Thank you for watching this video and sticking to the end. I hope you have found this video useful. If so, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel as I am going to create more videos like this in the future. In the description below, I have provided links to the wiki pages of the Mr. project. And you can also read the blog version of this video on my easycontents.org website. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.